Hello. Hey, everyone. See Camille writing in the agenda, so hopefully I'll join shortly. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start with the, the big news is that uh, a thing happened this weekend um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it went uh, pretty well. So um, yeah, just uh, huge, huge congrats and, and thanks everyone who is uh, involved in the decomposition over the last, uh, de decomposition effort over the last year. Um, lots of, lots of thanks and uh, celebration shared in, in a lot of different channels. Um, so uh, just, yeah, great to see, uh, great to see us get to that point. And um, I linked to the uh, CI decomposition retro issue that, Dylan open. Uh, so yeah, please everyone feel free to um, chime in there with uh, thoughts and comments. I think a lot, a lot of good takeaways um, for, for future um, big maintenance efforts like this. Uh, I linked to, yeah, this issue that Camille, you just opened. Did you wanna um, talk about it a little more? I'm, I'm a little hesitant to talk too much about that because there is still like very little data points, um, especially like when you try to look at the application performance. Uh, um, I, I kind of expect to rather wait a full week to assess application performance, but there is a few interesting out of the uh, database behavior that you can look in this issue. Maybe I could share my screen and spend like two minutes discussing that. Uh, there's clearly some like noticeable observations, for example, like number of used right table connections on, on the on the patroni of main. Um, it seems that like main database basically floods out at 200 out of 360 uh, of the connections being in use where CI during crash hours basically consumes more. So it kind of, it seems to indicate that CI is rather like a long running transaction type of the workload where on the main, we rather have quite amount of the headroom on the connections, but they are mostly like very short uh, transactions to execute that doesn't really hog the database for too long. Um, like the, the Monday yesterday was like pretty strange because of the US holiday, but I think the same pattern kind of follows two days. So we can assume that this peaks, like if you sum like 200 with 160 kind of gives you like the peaks from the last week. So it seems to be like rather a, a new normal uh, behavior of how many connections we need on the main. Uh, second, like CPU load, it's kind of mixed back because depending on time of the day, we observe something like a reduction from 50 to 25, or like from from like the peak here is like a peak of 60 percent of the or maybe i'm just gonna enlarge that um here like there are like peaks of 60 percent but these are rather like a peaks oh sorry <laughs> i clicked the wrong image uh, but these are like the peaks during us rush hours so we didn't have like a full us rush hours uh yet but it's clearly visible that like even in the europe time zone we had picks up to 60 right now this peak is closer to 55 or maybe 40 percent of the cpu usage on the on the main database um i'm kind of surprised because i expected a little more on the ci but um maybe more a lot observe we give you like more thoughts about that, but it seems like that the CPU reduction is 
somewhere around like one third um, when we move the, the CI traffic into its own. Uh, this is probably like the, the, the most beautiful graph because the vacuuming activity, we were very often saturating up to 100 or like very close to 80%. Uh, but it's pretty stable right now, it's about 15% on both databases, the vacuuming. And this, this is pretty easy like to reason because I started to look at the uh, dead tuples. So we have some dead tuples still happening on the main database, as you can see here, like project mirror data. I saw also sometimes quite amount of the tuple updates on the some merge request data, but this is basically pretty flat. Like main database doesn't really have a lot of trouble of vacuuming after the composition, we kind of move a lot of this vacuuming effectively into CI because CI, because of the how it updates, it ad updates pretty wide rows. So CI runner, CI delete objects, CI build trace chunks, CI builds, this is something that receives like the most of the dead tuples, but with this added capacity, just vacuuming seems to be like catching up and, and being at very low percentage. Uh, at this moment. Uh, transactions observed on the main writable database. Uh, I, I'm kind of still looking for more data, but it seems that like we, we kind of reduced amount of the writable transactions on the primary by about one third looking at these peaks. Uh, this dotted line is the line from the last week uh, as is in the... Um, our Grafana dashboards. So that's it. More data next week from me. That's really useful. Um, the uh, transaction was we're missing the CI one, right? So we should see the sum of the CI transactions somewhat roughly add up to what it was. Yes, last this, week. I mean, this 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 adapts to like to what we observed last week. So um, it's not that like we have less. We have basically roughly the same amount of the traffic everywhere. It's just like that, it's shift. Thanks, Gabriel, for compiling. I like data, and I think it's really nice when you can you can actually see the impact of these changes. So um, I think that's a really, really good result. And I'm also looking for more data on it. We should definitely talk about this as well in a blog post, um, you know, and, Sort of highlight, you know, the changes that we saw and the impact that we're seeing. I think that's going to be going to be useful. So, thanks for that, Camille. It looks like your your notes kind of seem like they don't reflect what we just talked about because the notes say you don't see any meaningful impact, but you just took us through a bunch of I, meaning, I felt like meaningful impacts. <laughs> uh, so, I, I'm my note says about like the application from the perspective of the user. Okay. Uh, but I, I saw like a database statistics, basically. So from the database side, it seems like there is like a very noticeable impact. But if you look at the, uh, I mean, let's say you go to GitLab.com open dashboard of the match request. Subjectively, it seems pretty pretty swift to me, uh, but I, I cannot really find the statistical evidence in numbers yet. For and I, I'm not sure if this is like, because maybe there is less traffic. It doesn't appear to be less traffic but it seems to be pretty swift but I, I still wait a few days to actually to compare different workloads and how the composition affected that because we clearly should see a positive impact on the ci uh, i kind of look at the graphql endpoint but this is like a, a drop back for everything with the read and writes so uh, it's gonna take some effort like to to find like this statistical significance on those. Uh, subjective really seems to be working faster, but uh, I need to find that in actual metrics yet. So maybe maybe ask uh, Tim Zalman or Lucas or people in engineering productivity for the, I think it's the GitLab performance tool runs and see, um, because that's that's probably the closest thing we have to the user experience and see if uh, they see a step function change there. Uh, seems mean? like a good idea. Um, I, I think that basically like there are probably like two ideas, like one looking at the specific uh, functions, like I don't know, CI 
I'm looking at the overall like uh, time to the presentation of the page, I guess, because it's much harder like like to really observe from individual endpoints. Yeah, I mean, they should be testing things like the you know the merge request page that you you feel is anecdotally snappier. I think they actually have metrics around things like that, whether it's first byte or I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, and some API stuff as well. But even even in lieu of that, I mean, I think users will definitely. It looks like we're we're more robust. We're going to be saturating a lot less. Uh, with less prone to outages. Um, those are all things that aren't necessarily continuous or in the moment, but they'll certainly be felt. And of course, you know, we've got yeah. our two x headroom as well for scaling. So, yeah. Well, I, I put a bullet in C just I wanted to echo the, the same congrats that Nick shared with the team, um, you know, witnessing the maintenance window, it felt very professionally done. It felt like, you know, being in a, in a surgical amphitheater and seeing all the prep that went into it and the um, discipline about staying on the happy path and um, felt like we were ready for anything that could have happened. So, uh, you know, the best, uh, the best job of something like this I've seen us do. So uh, congrats to everybody on that and, and keep it up. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for joining as well. It was uh, it was quite the event. <laughs> I think Eric right. was the only one celebrating before. <laughs> yes, I we tried, tried to have a beer. <laughs> uh, uh, Eric trusted in us on executing happy pops. So I knew I knew exactly how it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I can say that now that I waited three days to congratulate you after the burn-in period, right? So yes. We also I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I was very tempted, but it was kind of early. And I'm like, uh, I could use a usual excuse of I just didn't go to sleep. So this isn't my first one today. It's my last one from last night. But <laughs> exactly. I decided yeah, for me it was like 11, you know, 10, 11 p.m. So my wife had already sat down, had a glass of wine, and watched TV. So timing worked out. Yeah. Also learned fun facts about the genomes of various animals. So was, uh, the lung, the lungfish. Yeah. Yes. I'm disappointed that Dylan didn't know more about his native species. But I know. I think I deserve some props for you know excellent small talk capabilities. You know while big change is happening. Awesome. Yeah, actually speaking on that, do congrats to the team for like we run into a couple of walls and. The team methodically dissected the problem and worked it out. So um, that coming from the infrastructure side, that is very nice to see because usually, you know, we get all worked up about it. So just seeing the response was super nice. We had yeah. a few extra people that help a lot. I mean, yes. Stan in particular, Steve. Yeah. I think it was super useful. Like, like, like we we talked with the run like. If the sentry would not work, and Stan would not confirm the sentry is overloaded with the front end requests, I'm not sure what our decisions would be. It rather would be go rollback <laughs> because we don't know what is happening with sentry to validate. <laughs> yes, I think having you Stan made a big difference as well. Yeah, glad it could be helpful. And Glad it was a simple thing like that. I don't think at that point you would have rolled back. I think you guys were too far committed already, but it's really uh, good to- uh, Our documents, our commitment criteria says we stay on happy path. We don't observe errors. Something is very unexpected error. <laughs> and, and like the from the practical point of view, uh, not all errors are locked in the elastic. A lot of errors are locked only in the century. So. It's not that like we can use elastic cells to 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 gauge that everything is working properly. It takes a lot of effort to find. Well, I think I think the good thing is that um, I hope that a lot of the tooling that was used here and some of the learnings they you know will go into the database upgrade. You know that's scheduled at some point and. You know, uh, if we you know ever have to do disaster recovery things for GitLab.com, I think none of that knowledge is going to be lost, and I think that's that's nice. Uh, I'm still very happy that we did it in 93 minutes and we're done with it. So, 
Yeah, I mean, that's an infrastructure planning for the upgrade to Postgres 13 soon. So all this knowledge is definitely going to have to feed into that. We have two upgrades. One is like OS upgrade, and second one is Postgres 13. So effectively, you have two maintenance windows. A, a lot of, I, I think like there is a lot of- No, they're happening concurrently. Uh, so, okay. So at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, and this maintenance used that template as a starting point. And so now it's like we're improved and then there should be some improvements that further improve that template. So that's pretty cool to see. Yeah. I, just seeing this, I think um, having these very detailed instructions where the only thing that people need to do is copy paste them um, and having very clear sort of decision criteria, I think that also helped reduce the stress, hopefully to some extent, right? Because you don't have to make up things in the moment. So it's really nice that we're compiling those. It becomes more mechanical process. Yeah, the yes. early, any, anytime you're doing any of this, you really, you don't want people to have to think. You don't want to increase the cognitive load. Um, so yeah. And this is why these, these plans are so detailed and why we talked about, let's think about more specifically about the exit criteria. You, you can figure out everything, right? But if you have 60% of it, that 60% you don't have to go deal with when you're in the middle of the window. So no, this was, this was fantastic. And like, I, I know I've said this several times, but this was the most tested change ever in the four years that I've been here. So hopefully this sets a new bar um, for us, for infra, um, for these kinds of changes. Thanks, Jerry. That means a lot. It's high praise from uh, from Jerry. He's our most paranoid, seasoned infrastructure <laughs> person. <laughs> so that doesn't come come often or easy. Great. Well, um, yeah, I think that takes. Uh, uh, going to the next point, I think, uh, takes us to the business of the, the working group itself. Um, so I opened uh, an MR to update the exit criteria to reflect the completion of decomposition. Um, unless anyone objects, I, I think we can begin the process of wrapping up this working group. Um, certainly there are follow-ups to decomposition, um, continuing to keep an eye on, on the impacts of it and um, following up with uh, actually removing um, the, the un, uh, no longer needed tables and freeing up that disk space and then working on self-managed support and, um, and, and those types of things. But I think um, in terms of this working group, we had set out uh, clear exit criteria being the rollout of decomposition in, in production, uh, which, which we've now done. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my proposal. I copied the, um, the, the process for disbanding from the handbook here. So uh, we've, we've done some celebration. <laughs> um, I imagine there will, there will be some more celebration as we get the opportunities. Um, but uh, yeah, next steps would be, um, would be moving the, the working group to past working groups, updating the page with uh, any relevant artifacts. Um, and uh, and reflecting the, the close date, um, archiving the Slack channel, deleting calendar invites, anything else uh, like that that we've missed. But uh, I guess, yeah, so I have two questions for the group. One, um, do we feel that we, uh, yeah, that, we've, that we are uh, in a position to close the working group? And then I guess two would be, um, what, when would we want the, the last meeting to be? Uh, would that be today or do we want another follow-up meeting or two to, um, you know, uh, discuss any anything that comes out of uh, further examining the, the impacts of decomposition and talking about uh, closing things. So um, I, I don't have a strong opinion either way, but want to um, get others thoughts on that. My, my take would be because it's it's 9 a.m. on the first business day for uh, the U.S. where most of our customers are. I wouldn't say like, let's make this the last meeting. We should do at least one more just to feel like we're kind of like burned in and someone, some customer hasn't discovered some funky feature that they only use and we have to sort of fix or repair something. 
And then the, the other thing is um, for, for this group, Jerry's been kind of, you know, to avoid distracting you all, Jerry's been working on a proposal for some stuff that comes next. And so we could start to get people's eyes on that and uh, get people's thoughts and contributions and stuff like that. So um, it doesn't mean we would avoid shutting this working group down and, and kind of, you know, celebrate and then roll to the next one, but um, essentially a lot of the same folks. So. Yeah, I think my preference would be to make, you know, find a good point to wrap this up and say like, this is this working group. And then if we have need for something else, um, I think maybe we can, we can make a distinct break and say like, okay, we are going to deal with whatever is next, disaster recovery pods. Yeah, I think and it's definitely should... important to have an end and, uh, and like yes. I said, celebrate for sure. Yeah, we should have an end when we should save the meaning slot. Because the, the, the next stuff is already, it's already carved space in people's calendars. So I, I, would, I would not try to like gather all these people again on another slot. Uh, my only personal objection is this is smack in the middle of my cycling on Monday evenings. <laughs> so I'm a strong advocate for finding a different slot, but that's just me. Or a different one. I'm okay. I'm still going <laughs> to cook up new stuff for us to do. So. Oh yeah, oh, it's a, uh, it's uh, it's not going to end. You know, I think we're not going to run out of out of work anytime soon. No, yeah, we, you could look at the um, eight a.m. Pacific time slot. So like an hour and twenty minutes before the time right now, if that's friendlier to some folks in uh, in Europe. Um, on Tuesday, I think we have the engineering allocation meeting that will probably stay, but be renamed. But another day, you know, we, we rarely have to have the, the dot com stand up uh, anymore. So um, could take think about taking that time slot. Oh, that would be great. Cool. Yeah, that all sounds great. So we'll we'll keep this uh, invite going, keep the channel open. Um, I can at least start preparing that MR to. Uh, close things out from the handbook perspective, if that works. But I, I agree, it would be good to have another week and um, examine the the results and and yeah, start talking about what's next. Because uh, yeah, I certainly agree. I think it would be a lot of the same, a lot of the same people, same teams, um, similar types of topics. So, um, but it, yeah, it'll be good to feel like this specific chapter has has come to a close, and we can uh, uh, reconvene under a, a different name and uh, and and mission. Really a rebranding opportunity. That's right. <laughs> cool. Um, and Fabian, you have the, the third item. Uh, yeah, no, that was just an FYI. Uh, we made the front page of, of Hacker News yesterday. Um, and I just wanted to link it for those that are interested. There was some interesting discussion on you know, database technologies. I think people were overall positive and thought that this was a sort of pragmatic step forward. But there was also a discussion on, you know, the, the lack of active active um, repl replication in Postgres and how there's many new interesting database technologies. And um, that was generally, I think, an interesting, an interesting read. And, you know, if you think about, oh, my CI minutes are not working, all of those concerns are fixed. And Mihi was very good at um, going through that and also supplying some some links into the backlog and some analysis that's standard because all roads lead to your understanding of the load balancer. I love getting Just, validation from Hacker News. Yes. It could be worse, right? Positive overall is uh, intensely positive for Hacker News, right? So yes, yeah, we'll take the compliment. Exactly. Well, and it's a. Uh, I think this is this is uh, something that I'm personally quite happy about. We published a blog post accompanying this change 30 days beforehand, and it got um, 19,000 views um, this month, and I think that is also, you know generally something that if we do these large changes, it seems that people are generally quite interested in understanding why we are doing these things and the impact that we are looking for. And I think being transparent there is, is quite, quite useful. And so that's maybe something that when we do these things, people you know, tend to read, read up on them. 
It helps you drive the traffic in the downtime page, right? Yes. Like, go read this blog post. Maybe we, we should like, you know, like align the reading length for the explanation with the length of the downtime window. You know, which maybe also puts a natural ceiling on like how much downtime we want to take. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's it. Awesome. All right, uh, that takes us to the end of the agenda. Um, well, thanks everyone, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at the next one. Bye.